it's so difficult. It's so difficult. Because I know that I'm a better engineer because I did this. But oh my god, I hated it. Okay, here's my advice. Hey everybody, I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. I have some exciting news. I recently graduated university with not one, but two STEM degrees, right? STEM degrees were the hot kid on the block. Arguably, they still are. Uh, we're going to cover three things in this video, okay? The first one is, what degrees did I get? The second one is, are degrees even still worth it? This is a really hot topic at the moment, and there's a lot of debate, you know, with the job market being kind of rough right now, a lot of people, especially people with degrees, are really struggling, and uh, a lot of people, their take is it's a waste of time and money, so we're going to talk a little bit about that from the perspective of someone who just spent a lot of time getting two of them, so uh, keep that in mind. Anyway, the third thing is going to be two degrees versus one is that even useful right like i spent a decent amount of extra time studying to get the second one is that even worth it versus the first one like what do employers think about that let's get into it so first off to start us off the degrees that i got the first one arguably the more impressive one at least where i live in australia was a bachelor of engineering with honors so i had to do an honors thesis for my bachelor of engineering and i majored i had a dual major in electrical and computer engineering. So I'm not gonna go over all the things that I learned in these degrees because I've already covered that in a separate video, but essentially electrical and computer engineering is uh, digital electronics, a lot of embedded stuff. In fact, my job at the moment is working as an embedded developer. My second degree was in computer science. So Bachelor of Computer Science, I majored in cybersecurity and there's no honors with that, so I didn't have to do a thesis for that particular one. So, these two degrees, the extra time that it takes in order to do them, I'll, I'll give you guys some stats. The Bachelor of Engineering at my university, which is a QS World Ranking Top 50 university that I just graduated from, it's in the top 50, it takes four years to do a Bachelor of Engineering with honors, and your final year, the fourth year, is your honors year. Now, the Bachelor of Computer Science is three years because there's no honors year, right? So if you just went and got the Bachelor of Computer Science, we're going to compare these degrees a little bit. Uh, if you got the Bachelor of Computer Science, you had, technically speaking, one extra year to get out into the world than if you just got the engineering degree. Two of them combined. So with the dual degree program at my, at my uni, it was five and a half years all up if you took it you know, you didn't fail anything, you took all the classes that were available and stuff like that. With me, I took six years, so I took an extra semester, because some of the electives that I wanted to do were only available in semester two. So, you know, they weren't available in semester one, so I couldn't hit that five and a half. I just decided to take an extra semester to do electives that I thought would be more useful and more interesting. So now we're done. Six years in total. That is a long time to spend at university, guys. I'm not going to lie to you. So we're going to compare some of the benefits and some of the drawbacks today. The first question is, are degrees even still worth it these days? You know, like with the job market being kind of rough as it is, a lot of people, even people with degrees, are saying that they're really struggling. So what is the opinion on this? Now, here's the deal, right? I want to ask you, I want to ask you this question from, from the jobs that I've seen, the vast majority of them say degree is required. Like I'm talking about like LinkedIn. So what I'm doing right now, I have a job and I'm pretty happy with it. I've been working part time there as an embedded systems engineer, and they're going to give me a full time offer relatively shortly for next year. But I don't think anybody will blame you. You've got to be the CEO of your own life and your, of your own career, and nobody's going to blame you for finding out what you're worth. So I'm scoping out other opportunities as well, naturally, as you do. And all of the jobs that I've been looking at, I'm, I'm looking at intermediate jobs because I have quite a bit of experience, even though I've just graduated. And all of them, or the vast majority of them, say degree is either required or seriously preferred. So keep this in mind, right? Um, degree required or seriously preferred. So if you take two candidates, I'm going to ask you this question. If you take two candidates, they have the same years of experience and they have the same level of um, personal projects that they've done, right? Like their personal projects are equally impressive. So we're talking about pretty much the same candidate. Ignore personality and culture fit. Because, you know, people can go either way based on personality or culture fit. But if we look at purely the technicalities, 
if you have these two people who are equally impressive technically, but one of them has that freaking stamp on the piece of paper that says you did this degree, it seems to me that employers will prefer the person with the degree. That's what it seems to me, right? So even though people with degrees are struggling right now, everybody's struggling right now. Like, do you really think people without degrees are faring any better than people with degrees? Potentially, if they have experience or projects. Because that's the thing. A lot of these jobs that I've been applying to as well, where they've said, like, degree preferred, they've also mentioned, like, or equivalent professional experience, right? So you could have a degree or you could not have a degree and have X years of professional experience. But there's the catch. The catch is you have to have experience. It seems to me, I've watched a lot of these videos on YouTube where people with degrees are talking about how rough the job market is. And the theme is pretty common that they have not really been proactive getting internships, doing networking events and things like that. I think people, people underestimate the importance of this uh, because I understand it. Like, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, you should be able to just go to university, do your classes, get the qualification, and that should be enough to get you a job. That seemed to be the case a couple of years ago, you know, when the, the, we had the whole pandemic boom where you could even just go to like a six month boot camp, come out as a web developer and get a job. It doesn't seem to be the case anymore. So that's that's really the, the big issue is... Um, People, people have not been proactive during their studies in getting internships and things like this or building personal projects. And people underestimate the, the importance of that. But I agree with them, to be honest. Like, in a perfect world, you should just be able to do your university studies and then be qualified to do the, the job. But at the moment, you kind of have to go the extra mile, unfortunately. So that's, that's the deal. Um, it seems to me like you have to do personal projects that are impressive. And I've covered criteria that you can use to judge how impressive your personal projects are in a separate video. I'll link that in the description. But yeah, internships plus degree plus personal projects and you start to look pretty attractive. You'd pick a field of study. So like in my case, I picked like electrical engineering and it's going to teach you an overview of the advanced topics that are available in that field of study, right? So I know roughly about a wide variety of things in electrical engineering. So what it does is it teaches you what is possible in this field, like what is actually out there. It gives you a scaffolding where you can go and say, okay, so these are the topics that are available in my field. And it's the same thing with like computer science or software engineering. It'll teach you about different kinds of algorithms. Will you ever use them? Maybe not. But that one time when you do need to use that, instead of it being a completely fresh and completely new topic to you, you will be able to pick from the, the back of your mind and say, yeah, I kind of do remember that. And that's the fact of the matter. The fact of the matter is you'll forget lots of things as you do university. Like if you ask me to solve a partial differential equation, you know, something I did in class like two and a half years ago, I wouldn't be able to do that for you right now. But if you showed me the solution, I would recognize it and I'd remember and I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 that's right. I remember how to do it now. Do you guys remember, like, there was a bit of drama with Mudaha from Some Ordinary Gamers where he's he was, like, claiming to be an engineer, but he'd never done an engineering degree and stuff like that. And it was found out that that's actually low-key, like, kind of illegal in Canada. It's illegal in Australia as well. So I live in Australia. And if you want to advertise yourself as an engineer or give professional engineering pro uh, like services, you need two things. You need an engineering degree from an accredited university and you need to be registered with a professional board of engineers. So you can't actually call yourself or like offer professional engineering services unless you have a degree. That's something that you should really consider because you might get yourself in hot water if you live in an area like this. Like if I go to a boot camp and I call myself an engineer and I start offering freelance services, I am technically in violation of this law and I could be fined. Now, if you called yourself a software developer, that's fine. You're not calling yourself an engineer and you're offering software development services. It is specifically to use the word engineer. And if you're hired as a software engineer and you don't meet these requirements and you are not supervised by somebody who does meet those requirements, then you and your company are liable under some of these acts. So you have to be really careful. 
Next thing is, are two degrees better than one? Do I feel doubly qualified? Do employers think that I'm doubly qualified? And I want to compare and contrast this dual degree program that took me six years against another program that my university offers that my brother is actually involved in, which is a integrated master's. So at my university, you can get a master's degree in six years um, if you do this thing called an integrated master's. So you do a bachelor's and a master's in one program and it takes six years. So we're looking at two things that are equivalent amounts of time. We have the master's degree program where you come out with, say, master of software engineering or master of chemical engineering or master of electrical engineering versus the dual degrees where I came out with two bachelors. So the main difference between the two is if you do a dual degree, you get breadth of knowledge with a master's degree, you get high, you get like specialized knowledge. So with a master's degree, you do a master's thesis and you sort of specialize a bit more. You remember how I was talking to you about uh, breadth of knowledge with the bachelor's degrees just before in the previous section of the video, you get even more of that with a dual degree. So I'm primed to know things about both computer science, so data structures, algorithms, Turing machines, uh, things like, like theory of computation, things like that. And I'm also primed to know about things in electrical and electronics engineering. That's the benefit with that. If I had just gotten like a master's of electrical engineering, I would probably specialize a bit more into something like power engineering or, or something like that, right? So with a master's degree, equivalent amount of time, you get more specialized knowledge, which is attractive depending on the kind of job that you're going for. Um, with me, I kind of wanted to keep my options open and sort of, because uh, to be honest, I'm not sure if I want to be an embedded guy forever. You know, like the salaries in web development are quite attractive. So learning about high level programming and data structures and algorithms is a very useful thing for me to know if I want to pivot in the future. It gives you flexibility. That's what I was going for. I was going for flexibility. If you don't care about flexibility and you just want to seem more attractive to employers with the specific knowledge that you know about your field, then a master's degree is a much better fit. And that's ultimately what my brother chose to do. I did it so that I could learn and become a better engineer. And my hope is that the knowledge and skills that I gain from that and the breadth of knowledge that I gain from that will help me to do more impressive things at work and in my personal projects that then help my resume, right? So it's, it's more of like first cousin once removed. It's not the degree on the resume, the second degree on the resume that gives me that extra confidence or gives me that extra weight to an employer. It's the fact that I went through and I learned a primer about all of this other stuff, it will help me understand more about the code that I'm writing. So for example, let's say for a minute, I became an embedded systems engineer with my electrical and software engineering, my sorry, my electrical and computer engineering dual major. I didn't touch an algorithms course in that subject, guys. I could write the world's worst algorithms. I'd have no idea about big O. I had no idea about how to analyze them. But for computer science, I had to take algorithms one and an advanced algorithms course where they taught me things like dynamic programming and, and additional things like that. So I'm primed to be able to write better code, more efficient code. And I think that that will, will help me when I'm actually doing things at work and doing projects and putting that stuff on my resume. So it's not the degree itself on the resume. It's not that line that says bachelor of engineering and bachelor of computer science. It's the experience and the knowledge that I gained from doing that extra degree that I think will help me write better software. So that's my take on, on degrees, guys. If I had my time again, would I have done the second degree? That's the million dollar question. Um, six years is a long time. I'm going to be, I'm going to be so real with you guys. I hated it. I hated it. The last two years of my, of my bachelor's degree, I fucking hated it. So, so much. I was working part time at companies. And I thought, man, I just want to get out of here. I just want to work. I just want to be in the industry. I just want to get amongst it. But I still have to do exams. I still have to do assignments. Fuck this. I hated it so much. I would go to work. I was doing some, so many more um, 
interesting and impressive things at work than in my studies towards the end there. It was crazy. Those last two years were really, really bad. I just wanted to get out. So from my headspace now, just finished, right? Personally, I'm feeling like oh, it's so difficult, man. It's so difficult. It's so difficult because I know that I'm a better engineer because I did this. But oh my God, I hated it. Okay, here's my advice. Consider a dual degree if you are going to work in the industry during your degree. Because here's the thing, guys. I burnt two extra years. That is crazy. I saw I saw my peers getting jobs at like Google. I saw on LinkedIn, you know, somebody I studied with and, and did classes with, she just went, she went to Google and got promoted. Like she did a three year comp sci degree, got into Google, and then while I'm still studying, she got promoted. And I was like, bro, get me out of here. <laughs> get me out of here. I've been burning two extra years. But I was working in an embedded job the whole time. So I've come out of my degree with five years of experience in the industry, working part-time. Like five full, not full, obviously, like, you know, part-time casual years, not just internships. Like I got internships and then they hired me on part-time after the internship, right? So, yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Consider a dual degree if you're going to work part-time. But, dude, I'm telling you, it's rough. It's really rough. I know that it has made me a better engineer, but I do feel, I do feel behind. I'm not going to lie. I feel pretty behind. It's, it's, oh, oh, you know, if you can just do a three-year comp sci degree, get out and get a job at Google, man, why did I burn those extra years? <laughs> I know it made me, I know it made me better personally, like a better engineer than I would have been otherwise, but it's rough. If I had come out of this six years with no internships, I'd be so cooked. I'd be so cooked. Um, anyway, that's my opinion, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. Cheers. I got a lot, I got a lot more stuff coming up. I got a lot more technical stuff coming up. Um, yeah, I, I got some cool stuff in the pipeline I've been working on. So thanks for watching. Bye.